All right, there are problems and solution to most topics of things we talk about. Um, today we're gonna suggest problems to the high turnover in the social work field, uh, some of the solutions to those problems. So there is a high turnover in the social work field. Uh, the problem, there's no longevity, looking at why, uh, the result of a negative effect for the clientele that they're trying to serve so hard uh, just to get a grasp on that. Uh, also, looking at the solutions, reorganizing the way possibly that the social caseworker operates within the field. So, some pretty startling things. One in three social caseworkers who fulfill one year in their post, that's not, that's not very good. Only one of those out of the three, that one will last <coughs> only 10 years in their field before having to find some other line of work just because they are either tired of that line of work after just being overwhelmed with the assortment of tasks they have to complete, uh, as well as just the, what they have to see. I mean, there's a lot that you have to see. And also just the way the position works. A lot of times agencies will try to shift staff around and that's what they're left with. So caseworkers cover too wide a course load or task load. I'm sorry, I've got too many things in mind. Uh, and they suffer an exhaustion. Uh, from one quote from a caseworker uh, in in an article that I read, it is not that we're lazy. Uh, it's just that, that there was a pressure to do too much, and oftentimes things kind of go on the wayside. People are outrageous. So I have experienced a lot of. Uh, the turnover firsthand, I've seen it. Uh, I was in foster care for some time, and during that time, I had 17 different caseworkers. And luckily, not that many people usually have that amount, um, but it is an example of how there is such a high turnover. Uh, like I said with the last point, not getting a lot of tasks completed, is the average caseworker gets less than 32% of the tasks that they are set, to, uh, set out to complete. Um, according to the uh, Association of Social Workers Standards for Work Case Management Manual, um, they talk about how this is the case right now that less than 32% of things are getting done um, just because they're so spread thin with different areas to work in as well as the number of cases that they're set to complete. Uh, one example of how caseload can be overwhelming, um, it is recommended in that manual that a caseworker try to hold a caseload of 15. And if you look at one example, Catherine Davis from New York, New Jersey, holding 97 cases in one year's time. So it's not just how much work they're doing, but also what they do. One example, this book, I decided to read a book along with my research, and that's really unusual for me because I struggle with paying attention through a whole book. But this book really had a lot of just staggering details of things uh, one man witnessed. Uh, this book, Turning Stones, My Days and Nights with Children at Risk, uh, Mark Parent talks about his experience as a nighttime intervention investigator uh, with the New York City's Child Protective Services Unit. Uh, the question, why does a mother push her cherished daughter 23 floors to her death? In the book, he talks about watching a mother push her child off of a balcony and watching her fall to the ground below and hearing the sound of that person hit the pavement. Luckily, that person did survive, but they were damaged for the rest of their life. Um, and that's, I mean, that's a terrifying idea uh, that that happens. One thing that I'd like to relate back to our common read this year, uh, in Edson San, you hear a lot of details, and one thing that I almost appreciate is how uh, Calcaterra doesn't give all of the just awful details of things that have probably happened uh, in her childhood, because one thing I've witnessed is people tend to turn off when they hear that information. But, like I said, problem and solution. We need to focus on solutions to the issue. I understand the issue, it's like kind of like, whoa, take a step back, this is insane. But it is a reality and it is dealing with people's lives and because of that, the urgency is great. Um, so one solution that I'd like to pose that I think is really interesting, I've seen examples of it work in my own life, as well as uh, one example that many departments in the state of Oregon are pushing for is changing the way that the case structure works. So normally, the child is the center of the case, and that sounds like that should be what's happening. Like the child is the problem, 
to be solved, the child's being taken from a broken situation or being moved into a safer situation, so why aren't they the focus? Well, this is actually the situation that we have now. This is current. The child is the center of conversation. Pretend this is a family table, and everyone's sitting around it, including the child, and they're all sitting together and talking. But one thing you notice is the social worker doesn't have like a direct link into there. Uh, the social worker is for that child, but one thing you think about, how many different diagrams of this are there? You think about the example from Catherine Davis, 97 of these, managing 97 different diagrams like this, like your, your eye is going to get lost. You're going to have to find some other way to organize this. I mean, I can't imagine that many, and luckily it's usually around 30 to 50 is the normal caseload, uh, as I think I forgot to mention. So this is what they're trying to do in Oregon, a family-centered case structure. What they do is they assign a social worker to a family. So the care providers you see is directly linked in as the family. I tried to associate the colors. Uh, the care provider being foster parent, adoptive parent, kinship placement, whatever the placement care provider is, they're considered a family or whatever it wants to be called. The child, the social caseworker, and the guardian ad litem are all linked in on equal basis. So what the, the, what the idea is to link the social caseworker and the guardian ad litem to place connection into that family. So all of the children in that family, not just this child, but whatever, three, four, five children placed within that family, that they receive care from the same providers. And you may think, well, what happens when the child leaves the family? Uh, that's kind of where the system breaks down. But the point they make is, the child, probably when they had a caseworker assigned to them as a case, they probably had a high turnover then. This case, they've actually uh, shown over the past 15 years that they've been trying to implement this and look into it and investigate it, that there's actually less turnover as far as the amount of caseworkers that a child sees during their time in care. And so that's really hopeful data. Unfortunately, there's nothing like concrete examples of, oh, this is the new way, this is what's going to work, because if that was the case, they would, there would have been something done by now, and the situation wouldn't be talked about as much. So, in the end, we're faced with that question of, what do we do, what do we do? I think it's important that we focus on the solutions again. Uh, to leave you uh, with a little bit of a summary, although there's a lack of caseworkers that stay in their field and enjoy longevity, there's hope to change this through the innovation of practice. And in the end, how can you be part of the transformation of the social work field?